objects are also symbols that stand for a reality whose meaning the objects, like letters, transmit. The true information is not in the objects any more than the thought is in the letters or in the words. Words are methods of expression. So are physical objects in a different kind of medium. Physical objects are the result of another kind of expression. You create them as surely as you create words. When you begin a sentence, you do not know precisely how you will end it or even how you will form the words. You do not consciously know how you will manipulate a staggering pyramid of symbols picking from them precisely those you need to express a given thought. For that matter, you do not know how you think. It is not surprising that you are equally unaware of the more complicated tasks that you also perform, such as the constant creation of your physical environment as a method of communication and expression. It is only from this viewpoint that the true nature of physical matter can be understood. It is only by comprehending the nature of this constant translation of thoughts and desires, not into words now, but into physical objects, that you can realize your true independence from circumstance, time, and environment. It is easy to see that you translate feelings into words or bodily expressions and gestures, but not quite as easy to realize that you form your physical body as effortlessly and unselfconsciously as you translate feelings into symbols that become words. Your entire physical environment comes as naturally out of your inner mind as words come out of your mouths, and that man forms physical objects as unselfconsciously and as automatically as he forms his own breath. The peculiar, particular aspects of your physical world are dependent upon your existence and your focus within it. Other kinds of consciousness coexist with the same space that your world inhabits. They do not perceive your physical objects for their reality is composed of a different camouflage structure. You do not perceive them and generally speaking, they do not perceive you. This is a general statement, however, for various points of your realities can and do coincide, so to speak. These points are not recognized as such, but they are points of what you could call double reality, containing great energy potential, coordinate points, indeed where realities merge. There are main coordinate points, pure mathematically sources of fantastic energy, and subordinate coordinate points, vast in number. There are four absolute coordinate points that intersect all realities. These coordinate points also act as channels through which energy flows and as warps or invisible paths from one reality to another. They also act as transformers and provide much of the generating energy that makes creation continuous in your terms. Your space is filled with these subordinate points as you will see later. These are important in allowing you to transform thoughts and emotions into physical matter. When a thought or emotion attains a certain intensity, it automatically attracts the power of one of these subordinate points and is therefore highly charged and in one way magnified, though not in size. These points impinge on what you call time, as well as space. There are certain points in time and space, therefore, again, in your terms, that are more conducive than others, where both ideas and matter will be more highly charged. The concentrated energy points are activated by emotional intensities that are well within your normal range. Your own emotions or feelings will activate these coordinates, whether you know of them or not. Greater energy will therefore be added to the original thought or feeling and its projection into physical matter accelerated. Now this applies regardless of the nature of the feeling, only its intensity is involved here. These points are like invisible power plants, in other words. Activated when any emotional feeling or thought of sufficient intensity comes into contact. The points themselves intensify whatever activates them in a quite 
neutral manner. Now this is highly simplified, but the subjective experience of any consciousness is automatically expressed as electromagnetic energy units. These exist beneath the range of physical matter. They are, if you prefer, incipient particles that have not yet emerged into matter. These units are natural emanations from all kinds of consciousness. They are their invisible formations resulting from the reaction to any kind of stimuli. They very seldom exist in isolation, but unite under certain laws. They change both their form and their pulsation. Their relative duration depends upon the original intensity behind them. That is, behind the original thought, emotion, stimuli, or reaction that brought them into being. Under certain conditions, these coagulate into matter. Those electromagnetic units of high enough intensity automatically activate subordinate coordinate points of which I have spoken. They are therefore accelerated and propelled into matter far more quickly, in your terms, than units of lesser intensity. Each thought or emotion therefore exists as an electromagnetic energy unit or as a combination of these under certain conditions and often with the help of coordinate points, they emerge into the building blocks of physical matter. The intensity of a feeling or thought or mental image is, therefore, the important element in determining its subsequent physical materialization. The intensity is the core about which the electromagnetic energy units form. In your terms, the more intense the core, the sooner the physical materialization. This would apply to whether the mental image was a fearful one or a joyful one. Now there is a very important problem here. If your train of mind is highly intense and you think in vivid mental emotional images, these will be swiftly formed into physical events. If you are also of a highly pessimistic nature, given to thoughts and feelings of potential disaster, then these thoughts will be quite faithfully reproduced in experience. The more intense your imagination and inner experience, therefore, the more important it is to realize the methods by which this inner experience becomes physically real. Your thoughts and emotions begin their journey into physical actualization at the moment of conception. These coordinate points themselves activate the behavior of atoms and molecules. The coordinates activate the generating behavior of atoms and molecules and greatly encourage their cooperative abilities, their tendency to swarm, so to speak, in organizations and structural groupings. The coordinate points magnify or intensify the behavior, the latent spontaneity inherent within the properties of physical matter. They act as psychic generators, propelling what is not physical into physical form. Thoughts and emotions are formed in the physical matter by very definite methods and through laws quite valid, though they may be presently unknown. These emanations in varying degrees rise from all consciousness, not simply your own. This includes cellular consciousness as well, so that an invisible network of electromagnetic units pervades your entire atmosphere. And upon this webwork and from it, the particles of physical matter are then born.